In today's video, we are stepping back in time to explore the ancestors of the trains I usually show in my train spotting videos. From track to signaling, cars, steam and diesel locomotives, and even the first stainless steel locomotive in the world, there's a lot for everybody to marvel at. Whether you're a train enthusiast or just curious about the history of railways, this museum is a must visit. Come along on this journey through time and witness the magic of the Portuguese National Railway Museum. Hello and welcome to Entroncamento where we will visit the Portuguese National Railway Museum. In order to get from the station to the museum's front door, look for the signs on the pavement and walk to the overpass at the north side of the station. While climbing the stairs we immediately notice the museum's roundhouse with the steam locomotives and where we will be later in the video. At the top of the stairs turn left, walk all the way to the end, down on the other side, take this alley and here we are, from the railway station to the museum in less than 5 minutes. As we get inside there's this reception area, half fence today, and the ticket office. Tickets cost 6 euros or only half that if you come by train. The visit starts in this dark hallway with a multimedia presentation on 20 screens and train sounds in the background. The first exhibition room is a tribute to the Age of Steam show casing a range of fascinating artifacts from that era. These include manometers, speedometers, oil canisters, locomotive injectors, water levels, vacuum gauges, and an array of miscellaneous parts. In this room two major highlights await with one being this large model steam locomotive boiler. The other is this model steam locomotive that worked with real steam. La Lilliputian, as it is called, was built in France in 1846, even before railways existed in Portugal and offered by the King of France to the Portuguese princes. Next we have a ticket section showcasing a variety of tools used to create, print, and distribute tickets to passengers, including a manual ticket marker and a ticket holder. These were present in every station. You may be wondering when we'll finally get to the real trains, but don't worry, just stick around a little longer. It will be worth your time. For right now marvel at these electromagnetic phones, some used until fairly recently in certain specific locations. One of the most mesmerizing exhibits in the museum, besides the actual trains, is this exquisite model of a Pacific locomotive. Constructed in 1940, it impeccably embodies class 550 in every aspect. Marvel at the intricate detailing of this model for it's truly a masterpiece. Later in the video a real locomotive of this class will feature prominently. Medical services are an integral part of the Portuguese railways. The museum pays homage to this activity with a dedicated section, underscoring its significance and contribution. Here we have a collection of equipments which used to exist in most stations. The tickets cabinet, like the one we saw previously, the telegraph, station master's desk, a wardrobe and a safe, something present in all stations before the widespread presence of bank branches all over. Also, first class benches for the first class waiting rooms and second class ones as well. Note this remarkable mural representing different jobs in the railway industry as we are near the end of this first building at the National Railway Museum, along with a curated collection of assorted objects commonly used in railway stations. As we journey through an active level crossing towards one of the most cherished parts of the museum, I'd love to hear your perspective. Do you prefer this sequential virtual visit? or would you opt for a closer grouping by specific subjects? Let me know in the comments below. Finally, one of the most anticipated moments in this visit, the Steam Locomotives Roundhouse. There are 14 locomotives here, the oldest, number 02049, dates back to 1857 and the newest, 855, from 1945. 855 will be featured shortly. 832 is being repaired to top-notch condition and will be unveiled here when the work is completed. 
I'll leave a list of the locomotives in the roundhouse in the description below. Do you remember the magnificent scale replica of a Pacific locomotive that we saw previously? Now we can admire the real thing. This is 553, a member of class 550, one of the most iconic steam locomotives of the Portuguese railways. Built in 1924, these locomotives were capable of 120 km per hour and used mainly in the South region. Their career ended in the early 1970s. Let's turn our attention to 855, the last surviving member of class 850 which originally included 22 locomotives. Constructed in 1944 by Alco, these locomotives were primarily utilized to haul heavy freight trains, in which they excelled, reaching speeds of 95 km per hour. They remained in service until 1969 when steam traction ceased south of the Douro River. While we admire this second-class bud car, please bear with me. Diesel and electric locomotives also have a place here and we'll get to them later. Meanwhile, let me touch briefly on how all of this came into existence. In the late 1970s, Armando Ginestel Machado, an engineer who worked for the Portuguese Railways CP, realized the value of preserving old locomotives and railway-related objects. He began storing them in old and disused railway buildings across the country, and some of these were eventually opened to the public as small railway museums. Mr. Machado passed away in 1991, but others continued his work. Finally, in 2015, the National Railway Museum became a reality. Thanks to all those who contributed to its creation. Continuing our journey, we find ourselves in the third building of the museum. After passing through the chronology of the Portuguese railways, we encounter a magnificent mural adorned with dozens of plaques from all sorts of railway vehicles. Can you guess how many are there? I don't even try to start counting them. In the opposite wall we find this scale model of a Schindler car. Upstairs, we find this small signaling section. It holds the key to seamless railway operations before the modern signaling systems. There's a barrette mechanical interlocking that we just saw, a Siemens electrical, a Jumont electromechanical interlocking along with flags and other signaling artifacts. Let's keep moving forward as there is still a lot to see in the museum. In the middle 20th century CP started promoting the use of its trains for tourism. These advertising posters were part of that campaign. They are undeniably beautiful and make us go back several decades. Through countrywide promotion of all Portuguese regions, Portugal's rich heritage and landscape became known by countless passengers who used the trains in their excursions. One of the crown jewels of the National Railway Museum is the Royal Train which dates back to the 19th century. The locomotive was built in 1862 by Bayer Peacock from Manchester. The Dona Maria Pia car in 1861 by Company G. Neural de Materiels Chemins de Fur from Brussels and the Prince car in 1877 by the British company Ibbotson Brothers. The locomotive's open footplate denounces its age for only the earliest locomotives had this area open to the elements. After the royal train, in an hallway, these signaling lamps, from the oldest to the later two, still in use. Two driving simulators stand out as some of the museum's prized features for railway enthusiasts. The one in the left, which we see, depicts a class 2600 and the other a class 2200. Regrettably, they weren't in use during my visit as they are open to the public only on the third Saturday of each month, with an instructor available to guide future train drivers. Not having had the opportunity to test our skills, we press on to where many real trains await visitors. Our first stop is this payment car, which was used to distribute salaries to railway personnel. That's why they have safes under the counter. 
Since the trips took several days, the car is also equipped with two bedrooms and one bathroom for its staff. The next track offers us this magnificent steam crane along with a fleet of old track inspection vehicles. While the others bear some similarity to those used today, two of these historical vehicles stand out for their uniqueness. One is this adaptation of a 50 cubic centimeters motorcycle to run in the train tracks. And the other this train bicycle, or bicycle train. Finally, we are delving into the realm of electric and diesel locomotives. These initial three locomotives were not acquired by CP. Instead, they were purchased by Sociedade Estoril for use on the Cascais Line, the first to be electrified in Portugal in 1926. They can operate only under 1500 volt continuous current. The first two were built by AEG and entered service in 1926. This one in 1950 by North British. Behold, locomotive number 2551, the world pioneer of stainless steel locomotives. Next, the museum showcases some of the shunting locomotives that operated in Portugal, beginning with a Sentinel shunter built by Sorfame in 1967. Next in line is a General Electric Class 1100 from 1949. And finally, a very elegant Drury shunter from 1948. The first mainline diesel in the museum's collection is 1501, the first of its class. These American-designed locomotives built by Alco were the initial mainline diesels used in Portugal and have been operational south of the Douro River since 1948, although nowadays only in track building and maintenance. Next, we have 1311, a center cab Whitcomb, which entered service in 1952 and was withdrawn in 1987. The last mainline diesel is 1225, a French design built in Portugal by Sorfame under license from Brissino at Lotz. The car section opens with a remarkable former wagon's lit sleeping car, a Type LX, built in 1926. After serving in the most prestigious trains in Europe in the 1950s, four came to Portugal and were once part of the night trains from Lisbon to Porto, Porto to Algarve and the Sud Express. Although we can't get inside, it's possible to peep through the windows and have a glimpse of the luxury interiors, here seen in day mode. The second car showcased in this exhibition is a first-class Schindler car with luggage compartment. It was built in 1949 as part of an order for 60 cars. Despite being withdrawn from service in the early 2000s, some were remodeled and are still in use on the Duro line. These cars, initially intended for use on local trains due to their very large doors, found their way to long-distance services due to their remarkable comfort. Amidst the real trains we encounter these to scale models. The first of a Class 500, akin to the previously featured 553, and the second this marvelous replica of a Class 1400 created using Legos. Undoubtedly, the most iconic trains in Portugal are these Allen railcars, similar to the Dutch Blue Angels, classes DE1 and DE2 of the NS. Some are still in service, although with these looks. They were built in 1954 and 1955 by N.V. Allen of Rotterdam as part of an order for 25 railcars and 12 trailers for use in the broad gauge, plus 12 railcars and 8 trailers for the metric lines. This second class was originally third, but given that it's padded, Unlike the usual third class at the time, it quickly became second class. First class is also quite comfortable and a hit with passengers. These rail cars have been widely used throughout Portugal's central region, with sporadic services both to the north up to Vigo, in Spain, and to the south up to Evora at certain times, albeit never for very long. They can operate alone, in multiple up to three, or in pairs with a trailer in between. The last train inside this building is the Nohab trailer built in 1948 by the Swedish company Nohab. It was part of an order for 21 broad gauge rail cars and 11 trailers plus 3 metric gauge rail cars. Unlike the rail cars themselves, the trailers have only second class ending in this panoramic hall. It would be nice to have a rail car here as well. Once more, outside, we are greeted by the three magnificent Sorfame restaurant cars. 
They played an important role on various routes, serving passengers as they traveled from Lisbon to Oporto, Barrero to Algarve, and lastly on the Sud Express. However, when this train was upgraded to Italgo in 2010, these iconic restaurants were withdrawn from service. Have you ever had a meal in this restaurant cars? Please let us know in the comments below how it was. There's also a mini train, but it wasn't working when I visited the museum because the locomotive is undergoing maintenance and repairs. It usually works every day except on Saturdays. Our last stop encounters the rolling stock that awaits the necessary repairs before joining the exhibit in its full splendor. Among these are a Class 2500, the first mainline electric class of locomotives in Portugal, a Class 1800, the Portuguese version of the British Class 50, and a Class 2000, the first 25 kV multiple units in Portugal. I'm truly grateful for your company on this journey through time at the National Railway Museum. I hope it brought you as much joy as it did for me. If it did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe.